So right now we're seeing a lot of destruction occurring uh, in St. Augustine grass yards in particular. And uh, that's, uh, you might even see a bunch of moths flying around. And it's the tropical sod web worm that's really damaging St. Augustine yards, uh, causing a lot of what looks like from a distance dead spots. Uh, the, the moth itself is, uh, has about a 20 millimeter wingspan and uh, it lays its uh, eggs on the blades of grass. The grass uh, uh, blades uh, will have the eggs and they're clusters of six to 15 eggs. The eggs will emerge in about a week or so. And then it's the larva stage and that larva stage is about a 25 day stage. But at that stage it's feeding on the grass and that's the destructive part of this insect. And so when I'm driving by a yard or I see something from a distance and uh, I see the damage in the St. Augustine grass yard, I don't know if it's chinch bugs and I don't know if it's uh, tropical sod webworms from a distance, but when I walk into the yard and I, and I look at the, the blades of grass, I kind of bend down and look at the blades of grass, and you'll see that there are notches removed from the leaves. A chinch bug is going to be a sucking insect, and you might even see a lot of dead grass with chinch bugs. With the tropical sod webworms, you're going to see living stolons, uh, and you'll see some blades of grass that are still green, but they're just heavily damaged. You might also see kind of a dusting appearance, and that's the frass uh, that's uh, on, that sometimes will be on the surface of the grass. And uh, and you might also see uh, some webbing too uh, uh, from the webworm itself. And uh, the thing is, when you're looking for the webworm, it's a nighttime feeder or, or dusk feeder. It doesn't like to feed when it's hot but you have to get down into the grass and, and look at the soil level. It's usually embedded at the soil level. You'll see a little worm, a little larva curled up there, a little caterpillar curled up there. It's translucent and uh, it's, it's not real active during the middle of the day when it's really hot. It's really hot right now. We found a few in here just kind of looking through the grass. You'll also see the frass, the droppings, and I have a pitcher uh, and at the end of that screwdriver blade you'll see the, the actual larva and you'll see the frass, the droppings there. So uh, the damage is uh, pretty easy to see once you get used to looking for it. The leaves are all kind of notched out. You see the frass on the leaves. And it's, uh, it's early September, and, uh, and we're starting to see a lot more damage. And it's been going on for a while. So it's in that larva stage for about uh, 25 days or so. And then it will go into the pupa stage. And at that pupa stage, it will get down into the soil a little bit, into the thatch itself. And after about seven days, it will emerge as a moth. And uh, we see this uh, in about six weeks, about six weeks into the life cycle of the tropical sod webworm moth. A good cold winter, and we would find that the moth, uh, it overwinters as a, as a pupa and the larva, and the pupa and the adult stage. And in that pupa and adult stage, it can't tolerate a really cold winter. So a really cold winter, and we won't have a big outbreak next year. But we didn't have a light, uh, uh, heavy winter this past time. We had a light winter, and so we had a, a pretty big infestation. I think it's as big as I've seen in my career been this year. So what do we do about it? Well, pyrethroids are kind of what we're using, kind of what the professionals are using as well. But it takes repeated applications. So you would make an application of something like a bifendrum, and uh, seven days later you would repeat that application. And according to the product label, if you use the spray version, you don't want any irrigation for 24 hours and uh, you don't want to clip the lawn for 24 hours. Now, if it was the granular version, tall star, something like that, granular form of it, you would, uh, you would water those granules in. But it's been taking repeated applications. We have several flushes that are hitting lawns. And so uh, I guess my advice would be get ready to make multiple applications of insecticides according to the product labels. But we are seeing a lot of it right now. And uh, what we need is a good cold winter to kind of shut this down.